so grateful to uh, be here uh, tonight, and I uh, want to thank God for his goodness and his grace. Uh, praise God for all of our members, all of our uh, family and our friends who will stream in. We are so grateful to you, grateful for you. Uh, just a few uh, announcements. Remember, this Sunday is our recognition day. I want to celebrate all the way around, and uh, forgive me, my uh, so much going on sometimes in my directions. Uh, but we want to celebrate both our youth and our adults, and things are coming together. Um, if you are uh, an adult, uh, in the link, in the link, uh, there's two sets. There's our Bible study notes in the link, uh, the description link for both Facebook and YouTube, as well as our recognition day form. Please just take time, uh, fill it out. You know, let us know anything that God has done for you or during the pandemic. Just want this day to be a day of encouragement and rejoicing. And so uh, please take time to uh, to do that. Um, on this coming Sunday. And remember, we are wearing our T-shirts. You can wear your purple or your white, I mean, black or your white, but uh, just wear our T-shirts uh, this weekend in a spirit of unity and togetherness. And let's have a good day in the Lord. We'll have a small repast of cake and punch uh, just to, to enjoy uh, each other's company. Amen. Uh, this coming Saturday is the uh, Emma B. Uh, Delaney Willamay Ashley Day at First Missionary. And so those women who would like to be participate, uh, Sister Sherilyn uh, Smith will be taking the van at 9 a.m., but the event begins at 10 a.m. At, at First Missionary. Uh, this Saturday at uh, 1030 a.m., our VBS workers meeting will take place. And so I encourage all of our workers to, uh, to be there and be on time. Um, remember on Saturday, June 18th, will be our Father's Day luncheon. And uh, that's from noon to 2.30. And so thank God for the women's ministry. Uh, there's leadership, Sister Ivan Smith, Sister Alma Harris. Uh, thank God for, uh, for them. And um, that is that. Remember to keep our church in prayer, praying for one another and, and uh, uh, th uh, keeping our world lifted up. Amen. With all that is going on, Pray, actually pray for me. This will have a special word for our young people on this Sunday. Pray that our young people will be out uh, this Sunday. But uh, amen. Father, thank you for your goodness and your grace. Thank you for our church family. Uh, thank you for your, your word. Pray that we would be uh, encouraged and uh, pray that your word would uh, bless us tonight. And, uh, and we thank you for your, for your word. Thank you for the book of Genesis and uh, all that it means for us and all you intended it to mean. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, last week we began a series through uh, Genesis and we'll do this uh, through uh, the <laughs> end of the month. I'm going to take a break at some point, um, but uh, all about Genesis. And uh, both last week and this week's notes are in the link, so again in the description link. Uh, and again, if you will turn your mobile device, especially if you have a cell phone, horizontal, you should see the notes uh, from last week as is. And a couple corrections I needed to make, and those are, are there. Uh, and then this week, uh, if you scroll down to page three, uh, you will see all about Genesis part two, where we pick up tonight. Uh, and so just a, a review from last week. Uh, we review, we hold to the authority and divine authority of scripture. Um, the authority and divine authority, amen, uh, scripture to uh, govern uh, the way the b Christian, the Christ follower sees the world, amen, the Christ follower sees the world, and so we continue to submit to its authority, but also seeing its divine authority, that um, as uh, Second Peter says, not by the will of man or some private conspiracy, uh, but men spake. Uh, as they were moved by moved by the Holy Ghost. And so uh, the word is a divine inspiration. Uh, there are lo a lot of people down through history who have written significant things about God, significant things uh, about God, um, significant r r rabbinical uh, writings, uh, sin significant uh, non-Hebraic uh, or Jewish writings or non-Christian writings. But those that we govern and li give our lives and, uh, and sacred adherence to are those 66 books of the Bible, of which Genesis 
uh, is one of them. Genesis is the written word of God. It is the written word of God. Uh, last week we talked about God and his good creation, his creation, but also that his good, his good creation, that when God looked upon all that he had made, he said it was good, uh, very good. Amen? And then looked at a theme last week of God and his use of covenants in the scripture, and particularly those covenants that impact uh, the rest of uh, humanity. Uh, we'll look again at uh, the Adam and Eve covenant or Adam's covenant, and uh, but particularly we looked at Je uh, uh, Abraham's covenant in Genesis chapter 12, uh, which uh, becomes an enduring narrative of scripture, and uh, lo we'll look at that in the upcoming coming weeks, amen? But God is a God of covenants. Uh, we call the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, and, uh, and the incarnation of Jesus Christ ushered in a new covenant, uh, which was done by his, his blood. And our failure to reach God and to honor God, uh, we, we had an old covenant, and we just couldn't keep that covenant. And God himself made a, a new covenant. Instead of us reaching down to him, uh, he reaches down uh, to us. And, uh, and so we thank, thank God for his goodness. Uh, a couple of themes, and doing this from a different lens, a different point of view, uh, so not like a, um, a passage by passage perspective, but looking at themes within the book of Genesis. And uh, one important theme, we'll look at a couple tonight, uh, one is the Imago Dei, and then we're going to look at the fall. And um, the Imago Dei, uh, Latin phrase, 10 cent word, uh, meaning the image of God, the image of God, being made in the image of God. And so a significant uh, piece of divine information that is revealed to us in the written word of God is us being made in the image, in the image of God. Uh, this first introduced in Genesis 1, 27, if you have your notes. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Uh, male and female created he them. Uh, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. And again, Genesis itself is uh, ever, uh, uh, we could spend five years in Genesis, <laughs> literally. I, I know a preacher who, who spent several years just in the life of Joseph, um, but there are a range of theological things that we, in uh, Genesis things, uh, Peleg and the earth being divided, Babel, uh, and uh, amen. But uh, let, me, let me do this. Uh, and so God says he creates man in his own image. Of course, in Genesis 2, uh, the uh, woman uh, is created from, uh, from the man. But regardless, the man is created from the dust of the ground. Amen. So in that sense, uh, there is nothing that, uh, uh, that in that sense uh, that God creates uh, that makes one uh, superb than the other. As a matter of fact, the Bible says they are created in, in, his, in his image. And, uh, and, uh, and then in Genesis 9, it is reintroduced. This is after the, the flood, after Noah's flood, where another covenant, we talked about that last week, the rainbow. Genesis 9 and 6, that whosoever was shed his blood. So after the flood, God is reinstituting uh, a law, law. Uh, by man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God made he man. And again, that is generic man, so that is all mankind. And he says, you be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. And so what does it mean to be made uh, in the image of God? Amen. And uh, this is, is, is so pertinent to the world in which to which we live in. Uh, and um, there are probably a lot of ways that uh, can be drawn as it relates to this, but uh, some very clear things. Uh, uh, 
one is dominion. One is dominion. To be made in the image of God is to be is to have dominion. Of course, God is dom- has dominion over all creation, both in the heavens, both uh, here on earth, uh, <laughs> wherever an isness is, God reigns over that. Uh, but within the earth, God has given dominion uh, to to mankind uh, over all creation. Amen. Um, I, I, I'd rather not take my chances against an alligator. I'd rather not take my chances against a lion or tiger or, or grizzly bear. Uh, uh, help me, somebody. I'd rather not take my chances against a copperhead snake, a, a, a hippo or a rhinoceros or an elephant. Uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. I'd rather not be in the, the waters of the Atlantic and have to face a uh, uh, a hammerhead shark or a giant white shark uh, <laughs> or an electric eel. Oh, Lord, I'd rather not uh, uh, be fall prey to the eagle. Uh, 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 but God has given dominion uh, uh, to humanity over all his creation. And, uh, and he says there in Genesis, as you see in our notes, he says, he says uh, to replenish the earth and subdue it. And he gave dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that minion. So dominion, dominion. And again, we, we live in a day and age where uh, uh, men are finding what they call unidentified flying objects. And uh, automatically, <laughs> we have uh, uh, histories and uh, testimonies of, of alien, foreign, foreign uh, uh, bodies and whether that may be uh, that that's up to God whether that may be they may be but we have a promise that that God has given us dominion uh, over all earth so don't don't allow a movie amen <laughs> don't allow a movie uh, to cloud cloud your your judgment and the truth of God amen God did not send his one and only son that's clear in Hebrew to give his life for angels. It's clear in Psalm 8. He, he, didn't, he, he did not bestow that honor to angels, but he, dis, he bestowed it upon us. We are the, the apple of his eye. We are his affection. We are the one that God has an everlasting love for. And, and to be made in his image is to have, to have dominion. Amen. N- not only to have dominion, uh, but another thing, and a very important thing, is dignity, human dignity. Amen. The very fact that we exist, that God created us, is enough for us to have dignity uh, for the existence of our life. We, we are not owed a life because we are black, because we are white, because we are wealthy, because we are r- born in the right country. We are not uh, uh, dignified to have life uh, uh, because our features are uh, made a certain way or, or anything like that. There is nothing outside of me that dignifies who I am. I, I have the right, I have the right, it is not conferred to, unto me, there is no law, there, there is nothing. The very fact that God made me dignifies my existence. Now, I can let other people take it from me, I can let other people put me down, I can let other people say I'm not worthy, I can let other things and forces rob me, but God made me me. God made me me. God made me my skin color. God made me who I am. Whether a person is blind or deaf, whether a person uh, cannot walk, whether a person has limited mental abilities, that that does not uh, a warrant or take away the right to someone's life. I wish you hear me today. And, and, and we know that this has has been an issue sometimes in medical care uh, uh, because uh, 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 the, the, right, the right to life it is not determined based upon some uh, outside uh, of, Lord have mercy, outside agency. Now, there are some who will take it into their hands, and that, that's the, <laughs> them, between them, them and God. Uh, but but as, a, as an independent right, uh, 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 we have the right, uh, to live and exist, and that is outside the will and desires of anyone 
uh, in this entire world. Lord have mercy. And that, that reflects the image of God. There is nothing outside of God that dignifies God. The very fact that God exists, amen, whether people praise him or not, whether they worship him or not, whether they rebel or not, whether they obey, God is God and he is God all by himself, amen. There is no agency. There is nothing that make, can make him less than God. God is God. And in the same way God has afforded us, he has afforded us that same dignity, uh, so much so that God says in Genesis 9 that, that, that the act of shedding blood is a type of punishment, a type of curse uh, in the earth. And it really makes you pray uh, for our country because we have, we have descended into so much bloodshed, so much bloodshed in, in our country, too much bloodshed. It, 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 it really indicates one, that we do not fear God and that we are, n are not aware or, or embracing the reality of the consequences uh, of, of which we, we put ourselves in. Amen. And uh, we really need to pray for our, our, our government leaders as they make laws and, and so much stuff gets caught up in politicizing and caught up in whose side and lobbyist dollars that we need to do what is in the best interest of a life. Y'all don't hear me today. We, you might not like it. Don't get caught up. We have to do what is in the best interest of, of a life. And anything that will tell you that a life is not worth a life, that's a lie from the pit of hell. That's a lie. Y'all may not like it today. You may not like it today. You may not like it today. But but life is life because God gives it. And and we don't have a right. Amen. Now, you can create what other scenarios you want, whatever ideas you want. Amen. Hypotheticals you want. But a life, a life is a life. Amen. And that's whether that, help me somebody, whether that's the children, amen, whether that is the incapacitated uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a hospital, uh, whether that is a child in the womb. Y'all don't want to hear me tonight, but, but that's the reality of, of the matter. A and, uh, and so we, we are afforded a dignity, amen. And then not only that, but, but also, also to create, amen. He, he says there that... Uh, that 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 replenish and be fruitful and multiply and and to reproduce, amen. And God has given us an amazing thing uh, of 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 to be able to to reproduce, amen. Uh, to to create and to create. Uh, the 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 Hebrew word is ex nihilo. Uh, in the beginning, God created the he, he created out of nothing, and God has given us the the ability the ability to create. Uh, not only just in reproduction, uh, but also creativity uh, in this world. And so uh, that's what it means to be made uh, in the image of God. And all right. And then we wanted to look at one other area, and that is the, uh, the fallenness uh, of this world, and we'll be through tonight. Uh, gen the genesis of a fallen world. So we live in a fallen world. We live in a world that contrasts the world of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, amen, a good creation, a harmonized creation, a perfect and rhythmic congregation according to the design of God. Now, watch this now. In Genesis 2 and 8, you have this on your pass out. So the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Every tree. Every tree, it was pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now drop down to 2 and 16. You can go back for your personal devotion and read all of Genesis 2. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So again, look there. Uh, all, all the trees were pleasant to sight, so good to look at. All were good for food. Amen. And... Uh, and also in the middle of the garden is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God says you, you can eat of every tree, every tree. Uh, you may as freely eat, freely, freely eat. Uh, but of the tree of knowledge of God, of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. 
you can freely eat of every tree, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt uh, surely die. All right, so just a few points that I want to lay out here. They were given freedom with some choices. They were given freedom with some choices, uh, but not free will. There are a lot of us who try to explain and, uh, uh, and create, and theologically and philosophically we do and have wrestled with this, but there is a, a term that we often say, God gave us free will. No, God did not give us free will. My will is not free. If my will was free, uh, it, it would, this world would look a lot more like the way Jonathan wants it to, to look like. If the, my will was free, uh, there'd be a whole lot more things I would do besides <laughs> disobey the explicit <laughs> command of God. Amen. They're, they're, they're my, our wills are not free. But God has given us some choice. Amen. We, we, can, we can choose. He has given us some choice. Amen. Not every choice is ours. Not every choice is ours. And neither is our will, our will free. Amen. And watch this now. Good is only qualified upon the choice to disobey. Good, the knowledge of good and evil. Good only has to be qualified uh, in the existence and presence, presence of evil. Uh, and, uh, and also that choice includes a range of good. Again, every tree uh, was, was good to look at, and every tree was good for, good for food or good for sustenance. And that's so important for us to remember uh, because uh, we're going to look at the fall in a moment. But always remember this. There is so much good God has allowed us to do. There is so much good. You, 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 you could have endless good. If you just spent today, if you just spent today going to, uh, uh, going to uh, Baptist, Baptist uh, n- uh, Lord have mercy, Baptist downtown, if you just went to Baptist downtown and, and just visited <laughs> every person that was eligible to be visited, you could do some good. If you just took uh, a, a loaf of your bread and, and went downtown and just passed out a loaf. Help me, somebody. Let, oh, I, I don't even got to make it that exotic, exotic. There's enough good for us to do. If you just picked up the phone, and I, I'm telling you, and I'm not talking about something that you would hate doing. I'm talking about it as you do it. It would bless your soul. If you just picked up and called people you have not called in about a year or two, relatives that you need to talk to, friends, that you just just, just want to call and see how you are doing. Oh, bless his name. There's so much good that God has allowed us to enjoy. The movement of our bodies. Amen. The, 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 those things that are good to see. There's enough good things to see. Enough good things for our eyes to lay hold on. Amen. Amen. The, the devil is a liar. Amen. We, we, we have our choice. It is is even consistent with the expanse in which the good that God gives us. God is a good God, and he gives us a great a deal amount of good to choose from. Amen. But, but what happens? Uh, uh, and let me say this. We, we, uh, I hear folks say, if, if, if I get to heaven, I, I will beat up Adam and Eve, or I'd go off on them. But every day we actualize the same decision. We actualize the same decision. Help me, somebody. We, we make the choice, and I'm getting ahead of myself, to di- disobey God. But watch this here. This is the fall. And again, in your own private time and devotion, you can read Genesis chapter 3 and 6. It said, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, when she saw. So, so heretofore, they did not even have to look at what was not for, oh, bless his name. Was not was not meant for them. Did not even have to. Did not even have to look at it. Oh, Lord, <laughs> Lord have mercy. From a child, they had they had. Um, Lord have mercy. Uh, I can't think of the dare, 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 dare was a program uh, about drugs. They had another one about uh, alcohol drinking. And as a child, I had n- I had no idea. I didn't have to see it in order to understand. 
uh, its potential harm. Uh, just a warning. But here, uh, the woman looks at uh, what is what is what is off limits, and saw that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired. And she took the fruit and eat, ate thereof, and gave also to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves uh, aprons. And so, a diso clear disobedience, of course. The, the multiplicity uh, and, and depth of Genesis, the, the entrance of the serpent, serpent, the subtleness of the serpent, the deception of the serpent. Uh, um, and you see that on your outline, the, the capacity for, for deception uh, to led to not believe God. Live in a world we are led not to believe God. God can say one thing. God can say, honor your father and your mother. Yet there is persistence in our world to dishonor our parents, to, to, to give respect to authority. Yet we live in a day and age where there is clear defiance and disrespect for those who deserve honor and, and, uh, and, and, and are in authority. A amen. I could go on and on uh, about that. Uh, the enactment of death and opened eyes. Remember, the knowledge of good and evil, but the curse is that the day you eat of thereof, it shall, shall surely die. And the Bible talks about three kinds of death. One is physical death, where the body dies. And uh, when you go through Genesis in particular, uh, Genesis in particular, uh, you will see uh, an interesting uh, types of lineages uh, over and over again, where it says, and he died, and he died, and, and he died, and he died, uh, introducing the reality <laughs> Uh, of 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 death, uh, their li their lives uh, became countdowns uh, 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 to to physical death. I'm I'm trying to uh, that's something I meant to put in my notes uh, today. Let me see here. But if you were to go to um, Y'all forgive me. Y'all forgive me. I, I put it, didn't put it in my put it in my notes. But but the, all I have to say is that the reality of the re the reality of of death uh, that that came um that came upon them uh, uh, death in um, that became a reality uh, uh, in. Uh, in scripture and um, but the, but to see that over and over again uh, and and he died so the reality of death um, if, if forgive me forgive me for uh, for that for that oversight uh, but but something that many of us may be familiar with in our history of reading of scripture uh, the reality of death introduced in the lineages of uh, of of mankind a second type of death is spiritual death so not only were they were, was death entering their bodies, but also spiritual death, a loss of connection uh, for, with God, a loss of connection, uh, a, a wall, a partition had been put up. And it is only in Jesus Christ, I'm getting ahead of myself, where that wall is, is taken down. Amen. So spiritual death. And then the f third type of death is, is eternal death. Uh, a sec the, the second death, amen, a death that, that, that I wish for, for nobody. Heaven is a prepared place for prepared people, but it, it is God's will that none would perish. But, but there are, are, are for sure some objects of wrath. There are for sure some objects of wrath uh, that, that uh, will be uh, eternally separated, uh, separated from, uh, from the presence of God, amen. And so death enters in physically, uh, death enters in spiritually, and without Jesus Christ, death enters in permanently. The Bible said, he that believeth not is, is condemned already. And then watch this here, 
further consequences and the reality of evil in Genesis. The Lord said unto the woman, what is it thou hast done? In verse Genesis 3 and 13, and the woman said, the serpent beguiled me or tricked me and I did eat. The Lord said, God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly shalt thou go and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise, uh, bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his his heel. And we're going to come back to that as as messianic. uh, uh, The coming Christ is already introduced and our mess up. God is already fixing up what we messed up. But we'll come back to that in the upcoming week. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule, he shall rule over thee. And then watch this here. Um, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree uh, of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat all of the days of thy life. Thorns and thorns. Also, and thistles shall bring it forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the, unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and dust shalt thou return. So made from dust, amen? And thou shalt return, return from dust. God also uh, 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 puts a... Uh, a, a, a barrier uh, uh, that they are no longer to enter into Eden and access to another tree, the tree of life. Amen. But, but from their consequences and childbirth uh, and, and, and the serpent, uh, his curse, uh, sorrows. Amen. Amen. The, the in- genesis of tears. Amen. Uh, uh, human relationships. There is enmity between the man and the woman, uh, marital relationships. Her desire shall be uh, for her husband, to her husband, help me somebody. So who, who, the issue of place, help me somebody, and, and but the Bible, yeah, help me somebody, and, and he shall rule over thee. Amen. So a whole lot of cataclysmic things that God did not attend that we suffer in this world. We cannot be good enough to change it. We cannot be smart enough to change it. We, we, we are suffering from the consequences of, of, of Adam's sin. Help me, somebody, the Adamic nature. We were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. And then we have our, our parents' sin. Help me, somebody. We got our sin. And so in sin nature, uh, disharmony with creation, you're going to toil. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to make you sorrowful. Uh, the reality of sickness, the reality of stress upon our bodies. Uh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, uh, so many things a- a result as a result of, uh, of, the, of a fallen world, a, a creation that, w- will, that, that is just in, in not in total disarray, but in enough disarray. It's still God's good creation, but sin has sin has marred what God and y'all pray for our world. Her, a, a, a certain number of hurricanes are set to pass through, uh, all kind of storms, and the more sinful we we become with the creation, Lord have mercy. Seem like the worst the the <laughs> the worst this this world gets. Uh, 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 that, I believe it's either in Jeremiah five. Or, or Jeremiah 12, one of those, uh, uh, J- J- Jeremiah says, sin is so bad, he said, the birds don't even fly right. <laughs> the, the, birds is, the birds are messed up. And uh, we, several times in the last few years, and even in this country, they've seen just dead birds everywhere. Out, they said a, a cataclysmic uh, human experience is happening r- right in, in the state of Utah. Is that 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 giant lake that is out there is just about drying up, and 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 the more sinful we become, help me somebody, we don't just suffer; creation suffers. The Bible said creation groans; it it is groaning to be released. It that that we 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 now watch this here. And, and this this theme is continued in Genesis. 
So when we see the fall and we see the reality of, of wickedness and human brokenness and brokenness in our world, Genesis 6 and 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. It just got worse. It ain't been worse. It ain't, it ain't just got worse. It's been worse. Disobedience of children, been there. Greed, been there. Uncontrolled lust, been there. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, pride, been there. I'm trying to think of all the, the, the seven deadly, deadly sins. Gluttony, been there. Been there. Ain't, they ain't just showed up today. And, and so much so, said every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at, Lord, have mercy. God, God, God's creation could rebel so much. The Bible says, I believe it's, it's, again, it's been a while, Ezekiel chapter 9 or Ezekiel 6. The Bible said that God, God, God's heart was broken over how how wicked Israel had become in her idolatry and her failure to love her neighbor, them to love their neighbor as they love themselves. And as all, you see disharmony in creation again. Murder. This, this, picking up this coming Sunday, but can't, even brothers. Envies and jealousy. Uh, 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 ke- uh, Lord have mercy. Jacob and Esau. And them just the names we get. That, 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 them, them are the the, the featured narrative, lying and cheating, idolatry, warfare, Lord have mercy. But here's the hope. I, I can't just end that way. Second Corinthians nine, 5 and 9, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Amen. Sin came in the world, marred, the, marred God's good creation. But God was in Christ reconciling the world, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. God is, at, God is at work reconciling humanity to himself. And watch this. Colossians 1.19, for God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Talking about Jesus Christ. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And that's the hope that we live in, in a world where, where, where men, mankind's imagination is continue, continually evil, continually outdone, greed, manipulation. Lord have mercy, in a place where, where there are baby formula shortages, got to put in laws and watchdogs, to make sure people don't price gals baby formula. Lord have mercy. In, in, in a world where, where, where men will make laws that are, that are hard for women and children, but won't care for women and children. Lord have mercy. In, in, a, in a world where, where you can see clearly the impact that when people have weapons in their hand, that if you live by the sword, you got to die by it. That 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 we continue to destroy each other, Lord have mercy. But I look forward and hold to the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God is reconciling all things to Himself, and God is reconciling us to Himself, and we say to the world, "Be reconciled." I don't know if that's you tonight. But I encourage you to have a relationship with Jesus, to have a relationship with the Lord. Father, heaven, thank you for your goodness and your grace. Mm, Lord. Mm. The reality of sin in our world, the reality of sin around us, and the reality of sin in us. Thank you for the honesty of Isaiah, who came to a realization I am a man of unclean lips in the midst of people with of unclean lips help us to be honest lord about our own our own disobedience our own wretchedness our own steadfastness to resist and rebel against you 
Lord, we thank you also for rejoicing that that's not the end of the story. So dismal, so hard, so, so ugly, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, so ugly, Genesis 3, so ugly, Genesis, Genesis 6, 6 and 5. We thank you for the hope of Genesis 9. Thank you for the hope of the gospel in 2 Corinthians 5 and Colossians 1. Lord, we thank you for how you are yet at work and working in us. Pray that you would use Jerusalem. Pray that we, 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 we would be agents of reconciliation, loving our neighbor as we love ourselves, loving each other the way Christ Jesus loved us, carrying the message, witnessing to our friends and families, helping people to destroy the structures and powers of sin by the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you tonight. Pray you continue to be with us and in us. Thank you in Jesus' name. We